The small children don't think in narrative terms. They don't think about a beginning, they don't think about a middle, and they're certainly not looking forward to the end. They're very much living in the here and in the now which means that uh, if you're thinking about creating arts experiences for children, well, then that's all you really have to focus on. All you have to focus on is what is the child experiencing now and, most importantly, how is that being mediated by the adults that are around them. And this was one of the things that, uh, that really got me thinking because, again, I heard some comments about uh, working in creches and working in, in preschools and so on. And I began to think then, well, if, if you're talking about attachment theory and you're talking about, well, who are these children securely attached to, they may well have formed attachment relationships with some of the workers in the creche or some of the uh, teachers in their preschools, but their primary attachment uh, figures are their parents usually. And so if we're thinking about arts in the early years, then we have to be absolutely drawing parents into every aspect of that, because that's how children are going to make sense of what it is that they're experiencing. And it all happens in the instant or the moment just after the experience has occurred. Right at the beginning of uh, Jason's performance, he, uh, he goes to uh, try out the bed, and he kind of slips and falls against the bed. And instantly, two babies started to cry. All right? And again, within minutes, the two babies were calmed down because their parents were right there with them. So the parents had interpreted that this experience of Jason appearing to slip and stumble might have given their child a fright, and so they offered the care and the nurturing and the warmth that the child needed to again feel safe and secure. So the child was able to have that feeling of being frightened, but have it mediated by their parent, and so could go back to enjoying the other experiences that were there on offer. And that's a really critical part of, of what continued to happen, in fact, in, in Jason's performance. Because at different stages, he came out to meet the audience and he brought different objects that he had been uh, working with or playing with in, in the performance, and he brought them out to the children. And again, he, was, he himself was very responsive to how the children seemed to react. But more often than not, what the children did was they would steal a quick glance up to their parent to see, is it okay for me now to give this pig a kiss? Is it okay for me to stroke this little bird? And if the parent gave a smile, then usually the children would, uh, would choose to interact, where either the children didn't, re uh, didn't interact with their parents, didn't check things out with their parents, or had a very strong feeling <clears throat> that they just weren't going to interact. Jason obviously was very alert to that, and he didn't push it, and he pulled back. And so again, the children were back in that kind of a safe space where they could continue to enjoy and to experience. Babies and small children are highly attuned to the responses of their parents. And so we give them the messages, not necessarily verbally, but we give them through our nonverbal behavior. And it's incredibly powerful. Um, the, the one thing that I have learned uh, over the years of being a parent and talking about parenting is that children and, uh, and even babies will respond far more to what we do than to what we say. All right. By way of demonstration, if I could just, this is the OK symbol. So if you could just make this for me with your right hand. This is the right hand. I know what it's like. The right, the right left challenged amongst us. Just hold it up there so I can see it because it is pretty. OK. Just wave it side to side. Try not to hit the person next to you. OK. Now put your hand onto your nose. Put your hand onto your nose. OK. Now I gave you all a, you can put your hands down now, a very clear verbal instruction. And I said, put your hand onto your nose. But because I put my hand onto my cheek, most of you simply copied what I did. I even repeated, put your hand onto your nose. Some of you did this. <laughs> and I did see you. But most of you simply did this, OK? So we should never underestimate the power of our actions. Uh, and so again, if as a parent you're thinking about, well, how can I interact with my very small baby? And how can I allow the arts to interact with my small baby? It's all about what people are doing as much as what people are saying. In fact, perhaps more importantly, what they're doing and how they're doing it.